We've all seen red eyes in photography, but what if you notice in a picture of your child that one eye was red, but the other eye is white? This is something called leukocoria, and it could potentially be a sign of something dangerous in the eye. Pediatricians actually check for this red light reflex at well child visits, and if they don't see that, it can be worrisome. Yesterday, I presented the case of a child whose mom brought her to the pediatrician after noticing in photos that her eyes were starting to look a little different. She noticed that whiteness in one eye and the red eye in the other eye, and she also noticed that the child's eyes seemed to be turning in some. The pediatrician did a eye examination and sent her on to a pediatric ophthalmologist who ordered an MRI of the orbits. Fundoscopic eye examination by the pediatric ophthalmologist showed this finding, which this entire white spot in the back of the retina is actually a tumor. That prompted an MRI of the orbits, and you can see both eyes here with this eye having a tumor in the back of the retina. This patient has retinoblastoma. Retinoblastoma is actually the most common intraocular tumor of childhood, although it is actually pretty uncommon with only about 200 cases documented per year. Majority of cases are diagnosed in kids under the age of four, and it is extremely rare to find it in older kids or even in adults. The most common presentation is leukocoria or loss of the red eye reflex. Other symptoms include strabismus, where the eye seems to turn in a little bit, or a loss of vision. Now, leukocoria does not always mean that the patient has retinoblastoma, and in fact, the most common cause is pediatric cataracts. But it is important for any child that has leukocoria to be evaluated by a pediatric ophthalmologist. You don't necessarily have to panic if you see it in one photo, because it could be line of sight in that particular angle that you took the picture. So it's important to look at multiple pictures. Smartphones can certainly be deceptive. Okay, well, why do you actually get red eyes in pictures? Looking through someone's pupils actually allows us to look at the retina, which is the back surface of your eyeball. And that tissue has a lot of blood supply, so the red reflex is actually blood. But it's blood within your blood vessels of your eye. If there's something inside of your eyeball that prevents the light from getting to the back of the eyeball, you lose the red reflex, like a cataract or a tumor inside of the eyeball. Now do you understand? For those of you who have taken genetics in college, you are really familiar with the RB1 gene or the retinoblastoma gene. It's classically taught because it was the first identifiable tumor suppressor gene discovered in humans. It's a gene that we all have that regulates cell growth and division. It prevents cells in our body from growing too fast or uncontrolled, which is what happens when you develop cancer. If you have a mutation in that RB1 gene, you can get uncontrolled cell growth and get retinoblastoma. Asked for bonus points yesterday if it is hereditary, and the short answer is yes, some forms are hereditary in an autosomal dominant fashion. It means if you have the mutated gene for retinoblastoma and you have kids, they have a 50% chance of getting that gene. And then there are other forms that are not hereditary, so that mutation in the gene just kind of sporadically happened and was not inherited. That's why it's important to know family history and get genetic molecular testing so you can appropriately educate these patients on whether or not they would be likely to pass this on to their children if they choose to have children in the future. Once the ophthalmologist suspects the diagnosis, usually MRI imaging is next. And you want to make sure that you're looking in both eyes because although 60% are only in one eye, 40% of cases actually have tumors in both eyes. So just to summarize everything I just said, we all have tumor suppressor genes in our body that help regulate cell growth. And in our retina specifically, if there is abnormal growth of cells, you can get a tumor on the retinal tissue called a retinoblastoma. If that tumor grows inside of the eyeball, light can't pass from your pupil to the back of your retina, so you can get that leukocoria. 60% of the time it can happen in one eye, and 40% of the time it's in both eyes. So, now that we know what it is, what is the treatment? It really depends on what stage the tumor is at the time of diagnosis, meaning is the tumor contained within the eye itself or all intraocular, or are there parts of the tumor that's already spread? Because if it's not diagnosed early enough, this tumor can actually spread outside the eye, including to the brain, spinal cord, liver, bone, and other tissue. The treatment can be variable and can include chemotherapy, 
radiation, or even surgery to remove the eye called enucleation. There are even some other treatments including cryotherapy and thermotherapy. The overall survival rate is 95%, and 9 out of 10 kids will be cured of this cancer. Because of this mutation in their tumor suppressor gene, they will need to be monitored for cancers throughout their adult life. That's what those in the hereditary form, and the non-hereditary form is less well understood. Our patient that we talked about at the beginning of the video is currently undergoing chemotherapy treatments in hopes of salvaging her vision. As we talked about earlier, enucleation or removal of the eye will lead to blindness in that affected eye. Another case of patient-focused and compassionate care. Stay tuned next week and I'll go through another case.